Hello, my name is Dr Tim Wallings and I'm a climate scientist and a lecturer at the University of Oxford. In my work I improve our understanding of how global climate change will affect our weather in the UK. If you've ever dived down in a swimming pool, you'll have experienced the pressure of the water acting on you and notice that it increases as you go deeper. A fluid is any substance that can flow, so it can be a liquid or a gas. The air around us is a fluid and so has a pressure, just like water. The pressure of the air on the ground is caused by air molecules colliding with the ground. We call it atmospheric pressure. In fact, atmospheric pressure depends on the weight of the air above. Weight is a force calculated as mass multiplied by gravitational field strength. We can calculate the atmospheric pressure using some pretty simple maths. The pressure of the air on the ground is force per unit area. So for atmospheric pressure, the pressure equals the weight of the air divided by the area. But weight is mass of air times gravitational field strength. So then the pressure is the mass times the gravitational field strength divided by the area. Also, we know that mass equals density times volume. So then the pressure is density times volume times gravitational field strength divided by area. And finally, the volume is just the area times the depth. So then we can write the atmospheric pressure equals the density times the area times the depth times the gravitational field strength divided by the area and then we can cancel the areas out. So the pressure in a fluid is pressure equals density times depth times gravitational field strength. In a liquid like water, that's relatively easy to calculate as the density of water doesn't vary much. It is incompressible. A gas like air is compressible, so it can be squeezed into a smaller volume. The air near the ground is squeezed more because there's a larger weight of air above it. Hence, it is more dense than the air higher up, and the pressure calculation becomes a bit more complicated. So in any fluid, the pressure increases with depth, just as it does in the swimming pool. Looking at that the other way around, it means that the atmospheric pressure decreases with height above the Earth's surface. For example, the atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 100,000 pascals, but at the top of Everest, where there's much less air above, it's just 30,000 pascals. Air pressure can also vary from place to place, depending on the weight of air above a particular place at a particular moment of time. However, there are patterns which tend to stay the same, with low pressure in the tropics, high pressure in the subtropics, and then low pressure again in the middle latitudes, where the UK is. These pressure differences help to drive our winds, as air is pushed from high pressure areas towards low pressure areas. This is the same as if you had two tanks of water, one with more water in and one with less. The one with more water has a higher pressure at the bottom of the tank, and you know that if you join the two tanks, the water will flow to even out the levels. My work focuses on the jet streams in Earth's atmosphere and how these are responding to climate change. The jet streams are bands of fast winds high in the atmosphere, which are partly driven by the air pressure differences within the atmosphere. Stormy weather tends to follow the jet streams. So knowing where the jets are helps to improve the weather forecasts. As the climate changes and the lower atmosphere gets warmer, we need to understand how the patterns of atmospheric pressure and the jet stream will change and what effect that will have on storms in the UK.